Hi friends, it's Nathan, a third year pharmacy student studying at the University of Waterloo, but currently doing a four month internship that ends in December. Welcome to the channel, welcome back to my channel. So I've become famous for my viral and recurring college finals week series. If you haven't seen those videos before, I will link it above in a playlist. There's four seasons now, so a lot of videos for you to binge if you're interested. But essentially, those are video diaries, meaning I share the highs and lows of the exam period unfiltered. And in between my emotions and thoughts, you'll see study with me time lapses and explanations of my technique. But I wanted to film a dedicated video that goes through all of my strategies for finals week in general. So what I do weeks before an exam, what I do during exams, especially if they're back to back, and what I do after exams. So if that's what you need, then keep on watching. This video will be broken into three sections before exams, during exams, and after exams. We're going to start off with the before exams and there will be chapters along the bar so you can follow along accordingly. Strategy number one, finish learning ASAP. Schools love to continue teaching until the very last day of classes right before exams and honestly this just boils my blood. It's unrealistic for schools to expect students to learn, understand, and memorize material within 48 hours in order to be tested on. Absolutely ridiculous. Therefore, in the final month before your exam starts, you should be fast tracking everything. Get ahead on the material and try to cover it all before your professor even goes through it. If your school uses an online learning platform, then you can just access those files and documents and begin your learning right away. Or if it's not available, then you can just send an email, ask your teacher, and I'm sure they would be open to sending you the documents so that you can get ahead. Why wouldn't they want students to be prepared? The whole point of this is that you can get all your learning done early so that you can maximize the amount of time you need to study. I always say that learning is not the same as studying. They're two separate entities. You need to learn first and then you can study, but you just need to get learning out of the way first. And the amount of time you need for the study period after learning depends on what the exam is. For anatomy, because it was so content heavy, I would aim to get my lectures done at least a week before and have all my Anki cards made so that I would have full seven days before the exam just to memorize the material. In order to do well in your exams, you have to be proactive and you have to think ahead. Two, make your study plan. A study plan is not the same thing as a study schedule. A study schedule is a timetable that balances your classes, studying, and social life. If you are interested in creating the perfect one, you can check out my video. I'll link it above. It's actually one of my most viewed videos of all time. But a study plan is different. A study plan tells you which topics you need to cover each day so that all chapters are covered by the time of the exam. They do not have time intervals unlike a study schedule. Study plans are very, very high level. To make your study plan, you need to first find out what chapters will be covered on your exam. Usually your professor might give you a study outline, an exam outline, or you can probably just ask them as well. I don't see why I wouldn't want you to be focused in your studying. Then you're gonna divide the total amount of topics that you need to cover into each day. Now, it doesn't just work out as a just clear, simple division. You need to keep in mind how challenging those topics are, how involved they are. Do you need to do practice problems for them? Just see how much time and effort it takes rather than how many chapters, I would say. But use it as a rough guideline and modify accordingly. Make sure you leave one day, the last day, for review and review only. So let's say it is Sunday today and you have your exam on Friday. You have six chapters to cover. That means you want to do two chapters on Monday. Let's say the third chapter is really, really heavy. So we'll do one chapter on the Tuesday, three chapters on the Wednesday because the fourth one is lighter. And that leaves the Thursday for review. Friday, you write your exam and you should be good and prepared. And that last day, your review day is also impacted by whether your exam is cumulative or non-cumulative. If it's cumulative, you would want to review the material that you learned pre-midterm as well as the material you learned in that week. If it's non-cumulative, then you only need to focus on what you've been studying as of recently. Another part of the study plan is calculating what you need to score on the exam to get blank mark in the grade. We often overestimate the mark we need on our exam to achieve our goals, or we overestimate the significance of the exam based on its weight. If your exam is worth 20%, it most likely won't have a very large impact versus if it was 40%,
that could actually make some drastic changes. It could really increase your mark a lot or it could decrease it. So the weight is always something to keep in mind that I think people often forget about when it comes to creating their study plan. On the other hand, if you're just looking to pass the class, then find out what's the bare minimum you need. And that will be able to guide the amount of time and effort that you put into studying so you can work smart and not hard. Hi friends, I hope you survived your midterms and are now studying for final exams. During times of stress, I often neglect my health, which is not good. And so supplements are key. Mine are from Adrian Gagnon, and I started taking these back in October and I haven't been off of them since. So that shows you how good they are and how important they are for my well-being. <laughs> This is their energy management line called Energix. This is the Energix Focus and I take this every day. It has caffeine for a stimulating effect as well as theanine, which is calming. This keeps me going for all those long hours of studying that I do. It's great for mental sharpness, mental cognition, and it's just a must need for getting those A's. This is the Energix Boost and I actually have a two hour class later today, so Let's take this now together. It's a powder that contains vitamin and caffeine and you basically just dilute it in water. My favorite time to take this is if I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before or if I have a long day of studying ahead of me that I know that I won't be eating very nutritious food or if I need to write an exam that day. It keeps me healthy and awake. It also is orange flavored so it tastes really great. Cheers. Adrian Gagnon also has other products in their line that help with endurance and recovery and I take those as needed. Whatever your health needs or academic goals are, Adrian Gagnon can help. Click the link in my description box to learn more and you can use code NAT20 for 20% off. Stay energized, friends. Three, studying. Now it's time to put in the work. On my channel, I have tons of videos on how to study and they get really, really specific depending on what you're looking for. I have videos on how to study for different subjects, whether that's bio, chem, math, English, humanities. I have a video on how to study after falling behind, how to memorize in two days, I have an Anki tutorial, how to score 100 on an exam, how to get your work done faster in half the time. Tons and tons of videos that go into glorious detail. So find out what you're looking for uh, and I will link all my videos. It's in a playlist above. During exams. We're now neck deep into our exams. What do we do? Number four, back to back exams. These are exams that follow one after the other. They can either be two exams in one day or they can be two exams in two days. Regardless of the type, they're the absolute worst. And prioritization becomes really important for doing well, especially with the following exam. Nine out of 10 times, you will not be as prepared for the second exam as you were for the first. If they are back to back, that's just how it is. I'll put my hands up and I'll admit that a lot of the times for my following exams, I'll just study for them after the first exam. And so that leaves me around, I want to say like six to eight hours to cover all the material. But because I'm so strategic with what I need to know, I always end up doing well for them. But on the other hand, if your first exam is more important than the second one, don't get caught up in studying too much for the second exam. Studying for both exams at the same time is fine and actually encouraged. It's probably better than doing one after the other, but make sure that you're not dividing them equally if they're not equally important. Prioritize the exam that is most significant and works towards your academic goals. Five, burnout and motivation. Finals week will always be one of the most stressful and emotional periods of a student's life. There will be moments when you ask yourself, what is the point of all of this? What is the point of working so hard? What is the point of studying? And your answer is this. You have worked so hard the entire semester and this is the last hurdle, the final boss. Use this opportunity to prove that despite everything that your institution threw at you, you are still standing tall. Use this opportunity to make your supporters proud, whether that's your professors that have been mentoring you, your parents, your family, your friends. Most importantly, use this opportunity to remind yourself of what you are working towards, your academic goals, your career aspirations, your yearn for knowledge. Please do not ever give up. Also, you want to ask yourself what narrative you fall under. So the first narrative is that you've done well throughout the whole semester and you want to finish strong. It would be a shame for you to destroy three months of hard work in three hours. The second narrative is that you struggle throughout the semester and this exam is the last chance to bring your mark up. In each scenario, there are different pressures. Use those pressures, channel them, and use it to motivate you, to drive you. You got this. 
after exams. Now, I'm not saying that this is the very end of your exam period, it's just what you do after an exam. Six, limit your moping. I am no stranger to crying after an exam. It's documented on my channel, on the internet, forever. But let me make one thing very, very clear. You are allowed to be upset after an exam. Don't ever let anyone invalidate your feelings. People always come up to me and say, Nathan, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure you did fine, you're overreacting. It's just an exam. It won't dictate your entire career progression. They're partially right, but that doesn't mean you can't be angry or disappointed. If you're in this state, it's because you cared enough to study. And when you care, you're vulnerable. I would much rather have you walk out of an exam knowing that you did bad and feeling sad about it than trying to brush it off and you know shove it under the rug and move on. We need to process our emotions, which I believe students don't do enough, which is why we have so many issues surrounding mental health. So moping is fine for a while, but not the whole day and definitely not longer than 24 hours. Within those two hours, I'll reflect on what went well, what didn't go well, but I'll always try to end the internal conversation on a positive note. Let's say in the last 10 minutes, I was really debating whether I should change my answer. I went with my gut, I changed it, and it was right. So that's a positive note to end this conversation on. Try to avoid the what if statements and regrets because those will just dig you into a really deep hole as you spiral. The exam is done and nothing can be changed. If you catch yourself making those what if statements, change the language. For example, let's start with the what if statement. What if I actually went to my office hours and asked my teacher or professor for help because it appeared on the exam. So what if I did that, then I would have knew how to do it. Change it so that it's next time I will reach out when needed. I will seek help when needed. So you wanna change what if statements into an actionable plan for improvement. And this example of reaching out to your academics brings us to the very last point. On your face. Seven, explain to your teacher or professor. In my most recent college finals week, I had one of the worst breakdowns ever. It was after my OSCE, an objective structured clinical exam. This was a five station exam where I had to collect the histories of five different patients, analyze them, come up with a diagnosis, create a care plan, a recommendation and strategies for their health issue. And I had an anxiety attack after the second patient. That anxiety attack really just made me spiral and for the remainder of my patients, I just wasn't thinking clearly. So three out of five stations, I completely just messed up on. But the minute after I pulled myself together, I wrote down everything and emailed my professor explaining what had happened. My professor was very empathetic and understanding of my situation and actually reinforced my beliefs that these exams are challenging, that you really do have to come into each patient, each scenario with a clear state of mind or else you won't do well. This wasn't an excuse, it was an explanation because I knew that if my professors were to see the mark, they would be like, what? Nathan is so strong academically. Where is this coming from? And I wanted to provide that explanation. And after letting them know what happened, they were able to take that into consideration. And I actually have a future meeting with this professor so that we can work together one-on-one -on, -one on how to improve my OSCE clinical skills. The moral of the story here is to vouch for yourself. We are humans, things happen, but our academics, our teachers, our professors, they're also humans. They may be able to understand and empathize and come up to a mutual agreement on how they can move forward with this. So remember that. I also wanna enforce that there's nothing to lose, absolutely nothing. You already did the exam, you did poorly. Whether you reach out or you don't reach out, you still did poorly. So you might as well give it a try, take initiative. What's the worst that could happen? And the response might actually surprise you. And those are my strategies I want to do on the weeks before your exams, during your exams, and after your exams. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like. Let me know in the comments when your exams are happening, how you're feeling about them. If you want to see more study tips, study vlogs, lifestyle vlogs, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. If you want to see more of my day-to-day -day life as a student, you can follow me on Instagram at Nathan.Wu. I'm also on TikTok at It's Nathan Wu. But that's it for me, and I'll see you friends in the next video. Bye.